Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, it's really loud. Um, first off, I'd like to thank Dennis uh, for organizing this, and of course, all the team, and especially all of the facilitators. It's hard enough to coordinate a half-day workshop on campus, much less if there's food involved and everything. So I can imagine the task that this really is. And I just want to say thank you to, to him. And also thank you to all of you who take the time and the opportunity to, uh, to come here and to be with us, to collaborate together and work on, on this hard problem of subsurface data. It's really, uh, it's really um, I'm really grateful that you guys are taking the opportunity and the time to, to work with us. So first off, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm Jacob Jackson, I'm with ExxonMobil, and my background at ExxonMobil is actually geophysics and petrophysics, and, but now I, my current role is leading the subsurface data strategy for the Guyana business unit inside of ExxonMobil. So I'm not a data architect, I am not an IT person at ExxonMobil, I'm actually an end user. I'm someone who's been on the other side for years and has all the complaints that everyone else does. And so it's interesting that they would, um, that they would put a person like that to lead the data strategy. I also think that it's interesting that they put, um, that, they, that they created a data strategy inside the business unit as well. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that in just a second. There's three things that, um, that I want to talk to you about um, today. We're going to talk about the rock and fluid sample DDMS and how that we're accelerating the OSDU platform value with our partners. We want to get value out of the OSDU platform, and so we chose to accelerate the rock and fluid sample DDMS. So first, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about um, the motivation and the business case for why we wanted to do it. We'll talk about how we've implemented with our, with our partner, and then we'll talk about how we're, wor we're working with the broader OSDU and, and uh, also collaborating with others in, in that space as well. So I hope to demonstrate to you that we are, we are operationalizing um, OSDU, we are operationalizing these data types as we're developing it uh, in the forum, and we are trying to realize, and we will realize, value for ourselves and for those who are working with us. And I want to send the message that we want to work with all of you as well. So let's work on this thing we call OSDU, and let's get the value that we need um, to make the, dis and the ability to make the business decisions. Um, so users spend a significant amount of time searching for subsurface data. Data can be in vastly different locations and formats depending on the asset, the business stage, and the vintage. I don't think I'm telling you anything here you don't know. Uh, this is the same problem I think that has been described, um, including yesterday and today uh, as, as well. And so we're, and, and this is not unique to rock and fluid sample data. This is, this is all subsurface data and beyond as well. And so whenever, Whenever we're, we're here this week at this face-to-face -to, -face to address this problem, right? And all of you who participate in the forums on a daily basis, you're all working to address this problem. So this is the base, this is the base problem. It impairs our decisions. It takes time. It costs money. And I've really enjoyed this week seeing the passion of each and every one of you as you um, as you're, you're, you're working on this problem, you're collaborating with each other, and um, either you really, really, really like talking about data definitions and architecture diagrams, or it's really painful, or maybe it's both. I, I don't know which. Um, our vision is to radically modernize our subsurface data with the best technology, standards, and workflows. We're not going to tolerate incremental uplift anymore. We want to make a step change here, and we want it to be really, really valuable. So we want to push the boundaries of what is possible with this OSDU platform and so that we can maximize the value that we get from our workflows. Because in today's environment, we need to do more, we need to do it faster, and we need to do it better than we ever have. OSDU platform is the way that we're going to do that. We finally have the technology with the OSDU platform. So we want to continue uh, to work 
with the industry to get to a point of interoperability and, uh, and therefore um, the ability to integrate. And without OSDU, we continue to suffer with painful and time-consuming workflows. So we're leveraging the strength of the industry to tackle challenges bigger than ExxonMobil. All of you have the same challenges that we have. We all have different challenges that are also unique. And we want to, to work on this thing that's bigger than all of us, the OSDU platform. So our vision is a world where trusted data is at the heart of everything we do and we don't have to move or copy it in order to use it. And a lot of people ask me, why rock and fluid sample data? And really, the, the reason is because of data governance. We wanted data governance, and these data types were ripe for data governance. Today, they exist in a myriad of Excel sheets or PDFs or what have you. And we wanted to get this much more standardized. We wanted to get it much more operational or operate, um, interoperable so that we can get better insights, faster insights, and so forth. So the strategy here is not just data management, because we can put them into folders on the LAN and save their locations. We could transform them into just a standard flat database if we wanted. We want to go beyond that, and we want to be able to use data governance. And so we needed a tool that we could influence and that we could, um, and that would work the way we wanted it to work, and OSDU is the perfect way to do that. So the rock and fluid sample DDMS in the OSDU data platform is an important piece of our subsurface data governance strategy. We want these, all of you know, these data types are high value. They cost a lot to get, they cost a lot to make the analyses, and the decisions that they influence are huge. So we want to make sure that we are getting the maximum amount of value and that we have the maximum amount of trust in uh, the data. Because we talked about the pains of can we find it, where is it, that type of thing. All of those things ultimately boil down to trust. I don't want someone redoing analysis, redoing a workflow that two other people did years ago because they don't trust it. They don't know who did it, they don't know why they did it, and so on and so forth. Data governance is the next step above data management. It's really, really important. So a lift and shift of data from the land to another data storage location, no matter how new and shiny that is, it's not going to be what we want unless we are able to have uh, data governance on that. So um, what does data governance mean? Well, we envision technology standards and workflows that enable these things. You could probably think of more, but I just put these on this slide to start with. So, it needs to be the right technology to store subsurface data. I already said we, we don't want to just put it on the LAN like we've always done. The LAN is great at storing anything you want to put there. So if that's, your, if that's your bar, then that's pretty easy. But we want something that captures, um, we, want cap we want something that captures the metadata and the primary records together. We want to make sure that, that we can set standards around those metadata and enforce that in our applications uh, that use the data and that, you, that users interact with. So what is the minimum data, minimum metadata needed to capture what matters? Why did someone do this? Why did they use this piece of data instead of that piece of data? What should this be used for? And so on and so forth. Technical assurance. We want the trusted context and technical assurance. So I'll go ahead and plug the technical assurance workshop tomorrow over lunch. So if you're interested, what is technical assurance? What does it mean? Why are we interested in it? Um, 12.30 tomorrow, day three, um, through lunch, you'll be able to, uh, I think there's going to be four presentations, if I remember correctly. There'll be a lot of information in there and discussion around technical assurance. Um, fourthly, we want to accelerate our workflows. And this one is really important, because I said we already want to go faster, we want to do it better, we want to do more. And so the best technology is interoperable, which enables integration, integration of applications, workflows, personas, and so forth. Integration, enabled by that interoperability, that integration enables acceleration. And so if we can accelerate our turnaround time, then we can come up with more and better scenarios. We can come up with new and better innovation. We can work more safely and be more 
productive. So the rock and fluid sample data are a key subsurface data type for us, and we're focusing on the development of the rock and fluid sample DDMS. We want to make sure that we can min maximize the trust and value around these data types. So the graphic that you see here, it's obviously oversimplified, and it's not meant to be an architectural diagram or anything like that, but it's a way to show that the DDMS is the, is the, is the way that these workflows uh, behind me interact with the data. So ingestion, curation, consumption, those are examples of a workflow that the DDMS would accelerate and allow us to, to leverage the, uh, the, the value that OSDU gives us. We'll talk a little bit more about each of these in just a minute, but for now, I'm gonna turn it over to Ron. Cool, thanks, Jake. Well, it's been great working with, with everybody in the forum, um, with our partners at Exxon and our, our partner ISV groups uh, and all the CSPs. One thing that I think we all uh, are recognizing is it takes a community to drive value through. Now, the community that we have all built together um, definitely produces a significant amount of value for the industry, but working with our partners at Exxon, what we um, are really laser focused on is how can we uh, shorten the time to value through an organization, through all the processes and groups that we have in the OSU forum, in the PMC. So first, we, when we're engaging with all of our partners in the, in the forum, as well as our partners at Exxon, is we need to actually go in and discover what, uh, what are the workflows. That's not a quick discovery effort. That's looking at what is the data life cycle like for that data asset. So in this effort, we actually went in and identified how does data move? How does the value of that data move throughout the organization? And then from that, we're able to identify what the white spaces are, where the risks are, so that those risks and those white spaces can start to be addressed in our implementation. So we're first looking at what we need to build and why. Um, especially in rock and fluid, data management hasn't really been solved in many organizations. Then we look at trying to devise a strategy on how we're gonna kind of piece together a prototype, a rapid prototype, an MVP. <clears throat> we create that uh, DDMS prototype, um, <clears throat> make sure that we're at least hitting our, our minimum viable product here. And then within this uh, kind of middle section here, we're actually working within the forum. So we're working uh, on canonical schema reviews in the data definition group um, we're also collaborating with everybody that's working in that around business cases, case studies, why we're making different decisions. We're documenting, um, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys have seen Daniel Pernas' documentation, we're documenting you know, all of the um, attribute data definitions you know, to a TA like we would expect in a standards organization. Um, we're gonna start uh, our DDMS schema development for review. We're gonna try to accelerate that as quick as we can through um, the channels in the data definition group. Uh, we're gonna collaborate with the EA and PMC. And what we're gonna try to do, and what we, are, we have started to do, is create a PMC project to where we can actually get this um, MVP out, contributed, and adopted, and actually get it into a normal release cycle of OSDU. In parallel to that, we are not waiting to collaborate with all of our software partners, our ISV partners, because in order to make this capability successful, it has to be used. So we're collaborating with all of our, our ISV partners in conjunction with our partner Exxon <clears throat> to make sure that what gets produced will actually serve the business needs of those ISVs and those workflows. So kind of a quick look at um, the high-level architecture, what we're looking at. One of the challenges that Jake alluded to that's very different about rock and fluid data compared to well logging that's in a lot of ways semi-structured, uh, rock and fluid data is very wide. There is so many ways you can measure, weigh, test the permeability of 
the um, conductivity of a rock sample. And so, and you're dealing with many vintages. Every lab um, for even the same company has their own format. So we're dealing with many different parsing problems um, when capturing uh, or when dealing with the unstructured data that is rock and fluid. So we are leveraging a, a series, or the framework is leveraging a series of external parsers that we can plug in uh, to actually um, build uh, or supply data to the DDMS. Um, again, it, just like many other DDMSs, is domain-driven API, microservice-based, modular and reusable, vendor and technology agnostic, and it's deployable by the industry, and it's about, we are really working hard to balance performance and cloud resource cost. With a lot of our experience so far building on OSDU, uh, we're trying to get the kind of best of both worlds there. Um, but basically what we're looking to do um, with all of you is see how we can start accelerating um, time to value for particular business cases, workflows, and starting to fill in the capability gaps uh, within OSDU uh, so we can try to bring value as quick as possible. Thank you, Ron. So with the last few minutes that we have um, in this talk, I'm going to now shift gears to how we're actually operationalizing it and how we envision doing that. So right now, all of these data are scattered across the land, mil millions of files for just one or two of the assets inside of Guyana. It's, it's, um, it's very complicated for people to find exactly what they want, exactly what they need to make the decisions that they want. Well, that they need to make. So this slide was given to me by CGG the, and the Data Hub team um, with, with, um, with uh, Tom Hewitt and Ragged and Tom Davenport and Jeff and Matt. Uh, we're, we, we, are, we have asked them to take the data that we have and figure out what's there and figure out what the gaps are between the DDMS at this time and figure out between, between what's important in those files and, and what the, where the DDMS is, and help us to, to enrich the, the forum with those, thing, with those gaps and close those gaps. So first we need to understand you know, what's in there, what are all in those files, and using the discovery that was mentioned earlier, we understand the workflows that we need to tackle. Yesterday in the keynote, the question was asked, you know, do you curate first or do you load first and curate la later? And the answer is it probably depends on the data type and the situation and so on and so forth. But it, the, the reality is at some point you need to curate. You, you have to do something. We, like I said, we, if you're going to put governance on it, you need to make sure that you understand what's there and how to use it. So as we do this, the main goal is to ingest into OSDU. It, we can clean it up, but we want to get it into OSDU as quickly as possible. So we're we're thankful to uh, to the to that team and all the hard work that they have that they've done. Of course, you know it was also mentioned that you need to visualize it. So here we have um, some some routine core analysis data plotted on the log tracks and then plotted on the. Uh, on the on the the cross plot here, and this is routine core analysis working in in IVAB. So, we want to make sure that the first thing the first thing we can do is visualize it. If you ask, if you go to an SME and say, "I think there's a problem with my data," they're going to say, "Show it to me." If you once we load it into OS, into OSDU, we need to be able to look at it and see what's there. And then finally, we need to make dec business decisions um, with the data that we have. And so we'll be uh, working with, collaborating with Aspen Geolog to, to implement the Rock and Fluid DDMS the same way that they've implemented the other DDMSs. And we're really, really thankful for the, uh, the effort that they've gone to and the support that they've given us in, in this as well. So with that, I think um, that's it. Thank you to all of these, um, to all of these uh, guys who, and more who have really helped us, Aspen Tech, CGG, EPAM, INT, and of course all of the internal folks at ExxonMobil, some of which 
are here. So any questions? Thank, ah. Thank, Thank you. you.